As Chris just said, we've moved to a station that makes the presentation of this same trap a 45 degree angle. Now the reason we have done that is to help you start to see how as the angle changes, the perceived lead changes. Well, I think there's nothing more than you to demonstrate this shot, Bruce. Okay. So I'll just show you one. <laughs> All right, let's look at one. Pull. That's 45 degrees. Yes, it is. Now, I did two or three things when I looked at that target. Where did I first visually pick it up as a blur? Where did I see it clearly as a whole? I want to shoot it where I saw it very clear because the eyes are locked onto it well there, and that's the best place to shoot that target. I also got a feel for the line of that target. So let's shoot one and we'll see if we can put all of that together. Pull up. As you'll see from the eye cam shot that there's considerably more lead. As we're opening the angle up, so we're opening the lead up. And uh, as we progress, you'll see that more and more. Let's just take a moment and recap. On the first station where we shot this target with hardly any angle, you can see by the eye cam that it took very little lead. Now we moved over to the station we just shot, which is 45 degrees, you'll see a significant difference in the amount of perceived lead that we were seeing. As you can see, I'm standing on the target line from the first station. It was a straightaway, little if no lead. Then we went to 45 degrees, uh, an increase in lead. And now, from this station, 90 degrees. And you'll see a substantial increase in the lead required to break this target. Now, we're moving through these targets quite quickly because all we're concentrating on right now is the perceived lead change as the angle changes. Later, we'll get into more of the fundamentals of how to shoot a shot. But right now, we want you to totally understand how as the angle changes, the perceived lead changes. Let's take a look at the target. OK. Pull. Bang. Well, you can see that this is a true crossing target now. It's at about 20 yards, and we have deliberately kept it at 20 yards as we've moved around this clock face. This is a crossing target right about like you would see on a Station 5 high house skeet field. So we know from experience that that's going to take around three and a half to four feet of lead. So let's shoot one and see if that works here. Ready, Chris? Yep. Pull up. Nice shot, Bruce. As you can see, there is a quite a considerable increase in lead on that shot just from the change in angle. The angle's getting larger, so therefore our perceived lead increases with it. Now, when you look at the eye cam shot in slow motion, you'll get a really good look at just how much lead there is. Now let's go back to the 45 degree angle and see how the lead is decreasing. Now, back to the very, very shallow angle target and see how the lead is almost nil. Let's go back around the clock, back to the 45, and back to the 90 degree. You'll see there's quite a bit of lead required there. So it's quite obvious by now as how the angle changes, so does the perceived lead. Now, obviously, there's more to this equation.